So it's a couple of minutes after six. I'm going to get started, and I'm sure people will keep trickling in. Um, and if questions come up, uh, please feel free to jump in, ask them. Uh, this is a pretty relaxed session. Um, and I'll do my best to answer things on the fly, but we also have another moderator with us tonight, um, Denise Rodriguez, one of our other librarians. She's going to be monitoring the chat box as well for me, um, and she'll be jumping in periodically too um, as anything occurs to her. Um, so we're going to get started now, um, and right off the bat, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, i try to answer that question about what is Canadian content and what we're talking about. So one of the questions that comes up um, that we get in the library a lot is um, how do I find either statistical information or business information that relates to Canada, um, both in the business program, but a lot of other programs will have to do business cases or um, you'll have to look at, um, you know, a real world problem uh, that uh, it applies um, either locally or nationally um, in a Canadian context. And that can be tricky. Um, sorry, my voice keeps cutting off. Is anybody else having that problem? I'm just going to adjust my mic there a little. See if I can turn that up a bit. All right, I bumped that a, li a little, so my microphone should be a little louder now, and I moved it over a bit. Is that any better? Okay, great. Um, so, um, as you know, professors are trying to make assignments relevant, they often ask uh, to do topics that relate to where we are in the world or to something that could be a real project that you could take on maybe even after you graduate. And so that leads to people asking a lot of questions about either Nova Scotia or Canada or the Maritimes, uh, and that can be tricky. So when we talk about Canadian content, that's really what we're looking for um, is that Canadian content is, is information that relates to Canada. Um, and that can be tricky because there isn't a whole lot of it necessarily being produced compared to, say, the world at large. So we're going to talk and focus on just the Canadian stuff tonight. Um, and so just on the first slide there, you can see some of the things that are useful to think about. Um, sometimes you want to think about um, a provincial context, so for Nova Scotia, but maybe if you're looking something up, you don't, it doesn't just apply to Nova Scotia. It might relate to New Brunswick or um, PEI. You might want to think about the Maritimes or a particular section of the province. So using different geographical terms will sometimes help give you better content. And sometimes you want to compare to other countries that have similar issues, um, particularly Commonwealth countries. Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa have a lot of similarities. Um, for instance, Australia deals with the same kind of dispersed population that we do for trying to deliver services. Um, Australia and New Zealand, and to some extent South Africa, de um, deal with um, various issues around um, large immigrant commonwealth populations um, and indigenous or aboriginal populations. Uh, so depending on what kind of topic you're doing, looking at some of those other countries and what solutions they've implemented will sometimes help. So sometimes it's not even the Canadian content you want to use, but to compare another scenario that might work as well. So those are just some things to think about. So we're going to start um, right on the library website, and we're going to go down to guides A to Z and look at a couple of the guides in there that all have Canadian sections in them. Um, and the three big guides, I'll open my browser in a minute, so please feel free to open a browser and go to the library homepage. But the big ones that <clears throat> we'll be touching on are the business guide, the Canadian studies guide, and the government information guide. And if, even if you're doing like a business assignment, 
don't be afraid to go and use one of the other guides that might relate um, because we do group things together. Uh, so if, if you're, there's overlap with another uh, topic, feel free to use that as well. So I'm just going to open my browser right now. And does everybody see the library web page here? I've lost well, mine. Hello. There we go. Perfect. Hi, welcome. So I'm going to go into the guides. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just trying to use my mic. Thanks. Not a problem. Please do. So I'm going to go into the business administration guide first. And how many people are actually used to using this guide or have used our guides before? If you just want to show hands or a smiley face there. A couple. Okay. So please feel free to get, um, get used to using these. Um, what we try to do is bring a whole bunch of sources into one place so you don't really have to guess where you're looking. Um, and the first one we're going to start with is the business source premiere. Um, now, this is a really important database for uh, business information, uh, but it is an international database. So sometimes it can be really tricky to um, pull out Canadian information out of this guide. Um, and for anybody that's following along there, you'll see in the chat box as well, Denise has put the direct link to the business guide. Um, and then you want to click on the first database business source premiere. So one of the really nice things about Business Source Premier is that you can be very specific with what you're looking for. And they have these um, uh, industry code or the North, Ameri North American Industry uh, Code System. And you can look for just about anything in here. And I don't know codes off the top of my head, so I'm going to just show you how you look up something. Um, uh, now. We're going to look at the wine industry here. Um, so in Nova Scotia, let's say we're doing a, our Canadian content is on the wine industry in Nova Scotia. So here you can see this whole list of codes. You can scroll through it. But what I normally do is um, I just do a find on the list and um, <clears throat> in order to scroll through. But you can um, scroll through the list or look around um, for whatever type of industry you're looking for. And so this first code here on the side is the code for wineries. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to take that right back over to the first tab I was in and do my search. So I'm going to put my industry code here and look at um, for wineries and just hit enter and that'll pull up everything with the winery code in here. So there's all sorts of, um, you can see in wine industry profiles for different areas, uh, different types of information. You can see all these different source types here. But if I want to try and pull out the Canadian information out of this, one of the things that we can do, you'll see here, is that there's actually um, a geography term, or geographic terms, I guess they call it here. So what we can do is we have everything on wineries, but now we're going to add Canada as a geographic term. And that's going to help us isolate what we're actually looking for. Um, <clears throat> so this gives us a whole uh, group of different items. Um, so we have uh, actually company profiles here for specific companies. Um, we have um, market export reports. Um, and so you'll see all sorts of different types um, of information depending on what you're looking for. Um, and this can help you um, 
isolate both Canadian information, but also the information in your industry. And it'll give you a good overview. What's really nice about these, like um, the industry profiles or the different company profiles, is that um, they'll actually give you more information, SWOT analysis, for instance, um, um, health and industry profiles as well. So depending on what you're looking for, these can be really, really great places to start. Um, now, the trick with this database is that um, because it is a large international database, you're not always going to see every company that you might be used to seeing. Um, and we can try, let's say if we were looking for Nova Scotia specifically, we can try Nova Scotia as um, a geographic term. You see it gets very small very quickly. So that's one of the, the tricky things, um, is that although there is a lot more information out there, um, these big international databases don't necessarily collect or index a lot of that. So one of the things we can do is try starting in a more Canadian-focused database. So we're going to go back over um, to the business guide. Sorry, before I do that, is there, are there any questions about any of this? Uh, See, I'm just going to check uh, the Denise, chat. There, there, there was a question um, about just being able to search for current information. Um, the question was very current, as in terms of oh, uh, sure. seven days, which I, it's not really easy to get into like by the week, but certainly on the advanced search, you can search for the last month. Certainly. And this database, because it is a really big, broad database, doesn't, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you, or at least I was going to name some of the, the newspaper databases. And with the newspapers and current events databases, you can get down to seven days, no problem. Um, so it depends on the kind of information you're looking for. Because newspapers do publish every day, it's very easy to do the, the last week, for instance. Um, so we could try a search like that. Um, so let's actually flip over um, back to the... Uh, and, and we have another question yeah. about how often is this database updated? Um, business Source Premier as a database is updated um, hourly. I've, I've prepped for a session like this one, gone into the classroom, and had the results change on me because they've updated it um, as they go. Um, but the trick is what kind of information is being added to it. So. Um, there aren't really a lot of, say, newspapers, in, for instance, but um, this is more like company profiles, um, industry reports, um, academic papers, uh, business reviews. Um, so they're not, they're not pieces of information that are, that are being produced in a huge mass or being reviewed every day. Um, it is a great tool for research papers. Um, and it's a great uh, tool for anybody that's doing, say, SWOT analysis or industry analysis, trade papers. Um, there is, depending on what you're doing, because I did go in and I put that um, industry code in at the beginning, um, it did limit that. But I'm going to take off the industry code, and I'm going to show you another way to do um, academic papers. So let's say we still got Nova Scotia on there. I'm going to put wine in here and see what we get. So there is more, there is a lot more stuff. It just doesn't have that industry code that it had before, but we can see we've got more news uh, pieces of information, um, statistical tables. Um, so we are seeing uh, Canadian Economic Observer, so another academic journal. Um, so there are various pieces of information in here. So it does depend on how you're actually searching the database. Any other questions that are popping up? Okay, I'm going to flip over just to the other database to give you just a slightly different flavor, and we'll compare this uh, Nova Scotia wine search in uh, CBCA complete. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So I always remember that this is Canadian because it's got CBCA in it, or CBC in it, but it has nothing to do with the actual CBC. Uh, this is Canadian Business and Current Affairs. Um, so it has a lot of daily news sources, so this has a lot more daily information in it. Um, and you could do, I think you can actually get to that seven day search in here. So let's try the Nova Scotia wine industry again. And in the last search we did, it said geographic, but in this search, in this database, um, it's actually listed as location. So we're going to move through different databases. They'll change some of the terms a little bit, but all the things that we do with the industry codes and um, the location searching, the date searching, you can move those around through different databases. They just change the interface a bit. You can see there's the, the, the code lookup again. So just as a comparison, um, in the other database, I'm just going to flip back over for one second because I didn't write down the results. We had 55 results for Nova Scotia as a geographic term and wine is our search. But when we do it in this Canadian business and current affairs, we get 611 results. And the real reason for that is because this is a really Canadian focused database. The first database we were looking at was a really great database, but it was far more international in its scope. Whereas this database is really trying to collect Canadian information in the first place. That's what it actually is, is setting out to do. So you're going to see a lot more of that information. Um, and you can see down the side different types of newspapers again, or excuse me, different types of information. Um, lots of newspapers. Um, but we already have 21 scholarly journals, so there's lots of different information that you can get, um, different types of information depending on the type of paper that you're doing. Um, and here under our date range, we have that question about seven days. You can actually enter um, right down to the last seven days. So let's see if I do this right. Uh, March is the third month, so let's go back to the 20th of March until today. Let's see if there was anything in here. And we'll update that. So here we do have three articles that were published in the last seven days. Um, particularly the last one, it looks like might be the most important for a an excise tax. So if we were actually doing a paper here on Nova Scotia wine and how that's important, this kind of um, article might be really significant um, because of course the taxes that are on an industry really can affect how well that industry is doing. So it is important to know that <clears throat> just by where you start your search can really affect what kind of information you get out. <clears throat> Any other questions about um, these two databases? It's also good to know that not only what you, where you search can affect what you find. These two databases don't always include the same information, so it doesn't hurt to search both of them. You might get enough information that you don't need to go search the other one, but it never hurts to search both. <coughs> Q. 
Excuse me, can you, uh, can you repeat the last thing you said? I didn't hear you. Yeah, that totally can. So um, I just wanted to reiterate that not only is it important where you search, what kind of information you get, but it's because these two databases don't have the same information in them to start with. So you can actually search these two databases separately and you will find different information on each side. And it's because they, they, they specialize in different information, they track different information. Um, so sometimes you can do a search um, and get enough information out of one database, particularly if you're doing an assignment. But as you move beyond um, Mount St. Vincent and graduate, you really do want to try and check different spaces to find out what kind of information is available. So I'm going to talk about some of the other databases um, <coughs> and things that are on this main page in business administration. Um, a lot of the searching has the same principles, so I'm not going to do too much more of that, but I'm just going to scroll down, and I know that can get um, a little wonky on your screen, so I do apologize. I'm just going to jump down to the newspapers. Um, I want to highlight that these are here. Um, uh, the Canadian newsstand, the Canadian major dailies, and uh, the newspapers from Eureka, but also the Globe and Mail. Um, all of these do have really great business content in them as well. Um, and for some newspaper, for some projects that you might be working on, um, where there's proprietary information, or if you're looking for that like absolutely current seven days, newspapers can be the great source um, for things um, that are really cutting edge. Um, so newspapers are a place not to be overlooked in the business world. Does anybody have any specific questions about um, newspapers or current events? Because I'll move on to statistics because um, that'll take up a lot of the rest of our time. Even if the newspapers are not recent, yeah, they can certainly help. Um, sometimes, uh, for particularly for um, excuse me, proprietary information um, or companies that are not public, uh, publicly traded, um, yeah, newspapers can be one of the few places that things get um, reported to the public. Um, uh, this wasn't quite a business topic, um, but in my own research, um, I looked at Google where they did censoring um, on behalf of the Chinese government. Um, they did it for a four-year period and then they stopped. You'll, Google will never tell you about this. Most of the information that still exists, exists in newspapers. Um, and because it was a thing they did and then they ended as a trial, um, it wasn't really well documented at the time besides in news sources. Um, so yeah, newspapers can be really great sources for lots of things. And sometimes companies disappear, they don't continue or they trade hands. Um, so corporate mergers, things like that, you may only get um, in a newspaper. How do you cite a newspaper article? That's a great question. Um, we actually have um, uh, New. Are you using um, APA? Okay. I'm just going to open another guide here. Give me half a second. I'm just going to open a new tab. 
So you'll notice that all our guides start with libguides. Now, same thing, but I'll just show you that we have this APA style guide um, right here in the guides list. And newspapers are part way down under the examples. And so magazine articles, um, newspapers all come under this area here. So if you had any questions, just so you know that we do have the APA guide, they have examples of that on it, um, and you can come back to those anytime. And if anybody finds something that we don't have an example of on this guide, feel free to contact us, because what we do is actually add things that people are trying to cite to our guide so other people can see them later. And I'll just put that for anybody that wants to mark it. That's the APA guide there for our look guides. I just realized, Denise, my slides disappeared. How do I get back there? I've never had to go back to my slides before. Uh, you can just stop sharing if you uh, click on the uh, whiteboard uh, icon next to the slide sharing, or if you just go to Tools, Stop Aha. Sharing. I'm learning. Yay. OK. <laughs> Everybody's learning something today. So um, we're going to put these slides up, but here is just, again, a list of some of those primary databases that we have, Business Source Premier, CBCA Complete, and then the newspaper databases there as well. <coughs> so now we're going to go in and, and take a look at some of Statistic Canada's uh, resources. Um, and these can be really essential if you're looking for both analysis of data, but also raw data itself. Um, now, just a, a disclaimer about Statistics Canada. They're really good with numbers, but they're not so great with websites. Um, and um, it can be tricky to find your way around their website. It can be tricky to get their information out. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to drop into the library. Um, and also, I'll try to show you some tricks of how to get um, to navigate their site better. Um, but what we can do, um, we've, I've added all the links that we're going to use tonight right to our um, government page. Uh, and that link, as long as I typed it correctly, should go in right there. Um, So the big reason we've put a lot of these things on here um, is just to give you one place so that you're not trying to dig them all out of the SASCAN website. And we do try and keep them up to date. So as things change on Statistics Canada page and they move around, we do try to keep these statistics up to date, or sorry, these links up to date. Um, and the big one that there, uh, the, the big ones that we're going to look at, um, excuse me, I'm going to scroll down here. Um, first is the census profile. So if you scroll down here on where it says Statistics Canada 2011 Census Profiles, um, that's what we're going to look at first. Now some of you may know there was a 2016 uh, census done. They are just starting to release the information. Um, it's only been maybe about six or eight weeks, the first information from the 2016 census has been out for the census profile. So it's really incomplete. So the, the 2011 census is still the most complete information you're going to find, uh, the most detailed information. Um, 
And this information is very, very detailed. So you can look up just about anywhere in Canada, um, either by the place name, um, or you can look up by postal code. You can browse as well. Um, you can look up geographic codes. You can look up by um, uh, electoral districts or um, uh, counties, all sorts of different geographical areas. But um, I'm not going to get into those details tonight. I'm just going to pull up Halifax to show you some of the options um, that you can do with this um, information. Uh, so here, just as some of the things that I mentioned, census divisions, metropolitan areas, uh, economic regions, the counties there, um, and you could federal electing districts. I'm just going to pick the first one here. So the, the census profile becomes really essential when you're trying to do a um, set up, say, a business case, or you're trying to look at um, a population base for um, some kind of industry or uh, business scenario. Um, and they get extremely detailed in, in these statistics, both by age, by gender, um, education level, um, uh, languages. Um, so um, if you wanted to, uh, say, maybe write an app for uh, new immigrants coming into Halifax, um, that spoke Arabic, you can actually go through the census profile and see how many Arabic speakers there are, either Arabic as a first language, as a second language, um, how many speak Arabic as the first language at home. Um, so you can actually gauge uh, how many people you'd be trying to reach with a particular program or with your app that you were trying to do. Um, uh, so there's all sorts of information um, that you can really uh, dig down. So I'm just going to scroll down here and show you some of that, those different characteristics. Um, so uh, marital status, um, how people, um, populations, at any time uh, gender is significant, they'll break down. Uh, so first you're seeing the total and the male and female uh, numbers. And I'll just double check what's at the top. Um, and so the, f the first three columns are Halifax, and the second three, it's Canada as a country. So you can see how we compare. So I mentioned um, uh, language. So I'm just going to find that. Uh, so this is uh, some detailed information about uh, mother tongue. Um, kind of speakers there are, for instance, the number of Mi'kmaq speakers, um, non-Aboriginal languages, um, and it can get, um, again, quite detailed in what um, type of information you're actually looking for. Um, so the census profile will really help in a lot of cases identify um, your population base, um, which is um, essential in many business plans and projects. Any questions about the census profile or any type of information somebody might be looking for in an assignment they're doing? This doesn't tend to have, um, uh, one of the questions earlier was employment questions. That's not covered in this kind of uh, information here generally. This is more uh, uh, characteristics of a population. Okay, not hearing any questions or seeing any hands go up. Um, let's take a look at one of the other resources. <clears throat> um, and the big thing that um, Statistics Canada is known for is for CAN-SIM. Um, this has an almost overwhelming amount of information. Sorry, I did that quite fast. I didn't explain. We are back on the 
government information page, and I'm just clicking on the CAN SIM link. <clears throat> and I will talk about this note at the top, because um, you'll see this for a lot of um, things um, on statistical pages. You'll see um, notes like this where they'll mention things that are archived or terminated. Um, that does not mean that the information is no longer valid, but rather the particular survey or data collection that was going on has stopped. And so that survey will not be updated with future information. So if you do get to a particular page, and it, it, it's not just about Statistics Canada, it could be uh, Industry Canada, Health Canada, other pages, um, it's that the page or the information will not be updated in the future. So you may need to either find another survey or another data set if you wanted more current information, um, or it may just give you a snapshot for a specific period of time. So CAN-SIM, I'm just going to um, scroll down here. CAN-SIM um, is a collection of all sorts of different survey data um, and data analysis that's done by Statistics Canada. But most of what you're going to get here is just raw data tables that don't have a lot of um, analysis to them that you can then use in your sources. And you can see all sorts of different topics here. Um, you can do a search. Um, unfortunately, the Statistics Canada searches are kind of terrible. They're not very robust. And I'm going to show you right at the end, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to use Google to bypass some of those things. Um, but I'm gonna, we're going to click through some of these tables just to give you an idea what to find in CANSIM. So I'm going to go into retail and wholesale, and we're going to go back to our original um, wine in Nova Scotia question. So under the retail and wholesale, um, where we see it says um, a number of tables, these are um, tables is how they arrange their information. So there's seven different um, data sets um, arranged into tables um, to choose from under the first link there. Um, I'm going to go by uh, type of product here, um, and you can see there's 22 tables that we're going to look at. So I get this long list of information. Um, you can see a number of them that say archived. That's because this data set went from January of 68 to 2002, and they're no longer adding to it. But depending on what information you're looking for, that's a huge data set that runs decades and can be very important information. It's just not going to continue in the future. So if we look at um, uh, some of these, I'm going to look at um, this table right here, sales of alcoholic beverages by liquor authorities and other retail out outlets by value, volume, beverage type annually. So we've got 10 years of data there um, to see who's selling um, the alcohol. Um, so you can get this description. The description is really generic. It's just going to tell you a little bit about how the data was collected. Um, but it's not really going to give you any information. This crazy number here is almost like the social insurance number of this table. It means that piece of information and no other piece of information. Um, so we're going to just pop, click on this table. So it's we're looking at 183-0024 in our list. And what I'll do is I'll actually copy that link just in case anybody wants to. It's not what I did. I copied the number. 
you can see that's a really terrible link, which is why I didn't put them all in my tables earlier. So here we can see we've got all sorts of things, various beverages, um, and the origins of the products. Um, and so this is a pretty generic table. Um, it does tell us, <coughs> excuse me, um, the geography is Canada. And it's always really important to look at um, the value or the volume, because this is our unit. And as you move through CanSim, they will change the unit or the dollar value based on what's um, most significant or maybe most useful for that data. But that means you can click on two or three tables in a row, and they're in completely different units. Um, so don't get yourself confused by that. Um, because they don't have a consistent measure, they measure the data by what's right for that specific data. So do keep that in mind. And you'll see up at the top here, it says this is data in the thousands. So we do have to add 00, zero on the end of this. So these numbers are even larger than just the digits that are there. So the geography that for this is Canada. Obviously, I told you we were interested in Nova Scotia. So what we can do is go into Add and Remove Data, the second tab here. And you'll see these on all of our tables. And the first, almost always the first term, is geography. So we can actually select Nova Scotia here. And you can pick all the different provinces. You can pick one or two provinces to compare. Um, and then you can find uh, different information. And then um, types of beverages. So depending on the table, you'll have more or less of these different steps that break down the data. I'm going to take this off, and I'm just going to ask for wine. Let's look at some of the different wines here. And then you can, again, select your time frame. And it'll tell you, sometimes here, it'll, this here, it says annual data. Some data sets, you can break it down to the month um, or it's um, biannually. So again, just like you need to watch your unit, just watch your data um, for the time frame as well. And I'm going to apply those changes. Oh, I have Canada and Nova Scotia. So first it's giving me Canada, all the different wines, and then for the Nova Scotia wines right here. So obviously I didn't uncheck Canada. Uh, but we can see the total wines, what the production was. Um, and it looks like as we scan this, um, red wines um, sell better than white wines in Nova Scotia. Um, or fortified wines or other wines. Um, and you can look at that data over time or compare different products, things like that. And then this would allow you to go and do some analysis in your paper to talk about, say, red wine sales versus other wine sales. So these tables can be really interesting. Um, again, they can be extremely detailed. Um, depending on what kinds of information you're looking for. Um, uh, you can see the different classifications of wines we have here. Um, likewise, different alcoholic beverages. You could go in and be very specific with what you're comparing. Um, but you want to, don't do, <laughs> we weren't too bad when I just selected Canada, but be careful how many boxes you check. These tables can get very huge, both left to right and top and bottom. Um, and then if you did want to take this information and then do something with it, I'm just going to scroll back up to the top, I apologize. You can actually download this information. Um, 
And for anybody that's not familiar, the comma separated value, this is a type of file that will actually be read by a spreadsheet. So you can actually download this data and put it into Excel. You can make this much more um, user friendly, um, pretty it up a little bit, put it in a chart or a table, um, and actually be able to manipulate the data and do a little analysis um, to put it in your paper. These are really great um, pieces of information if you're looking for um, any business cases, industry analysis, things like that that you're trying to develop. Any questions about any of that? Great. I'm liking this. I'm liking the good feedback. Okay, so we've got about 10 minutes left. I'm going to show you, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit um, and uh, just show you a really, really useful trick that I use with Google all the time. Um, I, like I did say, um, Statistics Canada but can be quite tricky to use. Um, and um, there's some advanced Google searches that can really help um, with uh, moving through some of these things. So I'm just going to turn off my browser for a second um, and pull up the slides. Let's see. Um, so I did have some others here, the Consumer Price Index, the Survey of Household Spending. Those are also on um, the federal government page there that we had. They work very much like the CanSim table we, we were using before. So if you know there's something you're looking for, um, please feel free to go in and play and, um, with the data and move things around. And if you're having trouble finding anything, just come on in and ask. So just some other um, places that I was uh, going to mention. We'll get back to those if we have time. But I want to show you these Google searches. Um, so uh, we do have these in a couple of places, um, some custom searches that have been created. Um, and they've actually been programmed. Uh, there's a great one out of Carleton University. There's another one out of the University of Ontario, or sorry, the Archives of Ontario, um, that they've created these custom search boxes that just search federal government information. And they're really fantastic resources. But I'm going to show you one of the ways that you can do this um, yourself. And I do have some of this um, in detail on um, the business page. So I'm going to put that, um, uh, sorry, I can't type and talk at the same time. I'm going to put that link right in the chat box for you. Because it does have um, the uh, explanation for this so that you can come back to what I'm doing again in the future. Oop. I misspelled that somewhere. That link is going to be dead. Let me just correct that link and paste it back in. All right. There you go. Told you I can spell and talk at the same time. So I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom of this page. I apologize. Look away if the scrolling is kind of gross. Um, and here you can see, um, move over to the application sharing. So here I'm on the business stats page. So I'm on the business administration guide. I come down to data and statistics. And I'm just going to teach you how to use this advanced site search in Google. Uh, and this has lots of great applications. Even if this is the only thing you take away today, this is a really, really useful tip. Um, but it'll help especially with Statistics Canada. So when you're in Google, you can use this command called site, um, S-I-T-E colon. And it'll help you um, do searches. Um, you can see one here. Um, that only search that specific website or that specific domain, and it doesn't search anything else. So um, what this really does is you can use Google to search inside any website 
you want to search. Um, and with Statistics Canada, because Statistics Canada's um, own search can be really difficult to use and not always very effective, you can use Google to search Statistics Canada. So I'm just going to open a new Google website right now. And um, so we did have a question about employment. And then you put in that modifier, that site. And I'm just going to pull up um, from CanSim, the Statistics Canada site here. So we've got statscan.gc.ca. If I copy it, I know that it's spelled correctly. So now when we look at this, you can see that all of these results will start with this Statistics Canada domain. And depending on what you're looking for, you can be more or less specific with your Google search, but um, here we have employment by age, sex, type of work, class of worker, province, um, and in the description we can see this goes right back to January 2017. So this may be some of the, um, hopefully this will, uh, some of these will answer your employment numbers or um, unemployment numbers depending on what you're looking at. Um, it's also really great because it'll help you um, start to get some ideas of maybe the words you should be searching. Maybe you're not really interested in employment, but maybe you're interested in self-employment. So I really, really like this kind of searching um, because it's great for any kind of thing that you're doing. Um, it doesn't have to be Canadian content or it doesn't have to be anything else. This site search here, um, site with a colon and no space, you can um, really target your search to whatever you're looking for. So let's say we want employment February 2017 and we want anything from the government of Canada, you can also do it that way. So here we actually have the labor force survey for 2017 from Statistics Canada. Um, then we have Service Canada, um, Employment or Job Canada. So there's all sorts of different things. So depending on how you actually manipulate um, this site, you can just look for government information. You can look for a specific government department. You can even look for a specific section of a government department, depending on how big or small you use of that domain. So if I pop back just over to the data and statistics page here on the admin, um, business administration, the example I used here was actually how to search publications on Statistics Canada. They don't have very good searches for um, Statistics Canada's publications. These are can be um, actually PDFs, and it'll search those as well. As long as they're searchable PDFs, Google can actually do that. Um, so this is a really great way to be able to get um, inside of that information and pull it out of Statistics Canada. Did that answer the employment question, by the way? Yes, it's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. Perfect. It was a good question. It was a good one for this uh, session. Now we're about three minutes to seven by my clock. Were there any other questions? Is there something you wanted to see again or something I didn't touch on? Can you talk again about the spreadsheet, please? About the spreadsheet? Yeah. Did you just want to see how to download information, you mean? Exactly. OK, perfect. So um, I still have that other um, 
uh, tab that we had open before, so I'm just going to show you how to do this. There are different, sometimes you'll have different data types, but the comma separated value is like a generic spreadsheet format. Um, and there are different, um, different types of data input. I think time as columns is what I have generally used. Um, And I'm going to use this one, the commerce separated values, the second one, because I, oh, no, that's the entire table. I just want the data that I've, um, that I manipulated. And then so you can download the file here. This is actually just going to download a CSV file for me. Um, but I think the Excel viewer will give you a better idea quickly. Oh, no, that's, sorry, that's downloading the software. I think this is actually, yeah, you can see this. This will actually open my Microsoft. And just let me see if I can figure out how to share that one. Yeah, you'll just have to stop sharing the browser and share the Excel file. Can do. So we'll click on this again. Thank you, Denise. Oh, now it's frozen on me. So what you can't see um, is that um, uh, an Excel file popped up um, with all of the information that was in it. Um, uh, it just laid out in the rows and columns as they were in the table exactly in rows and columns inside of a spreadsheet without me having to manipulate the data or anything like that. And because they are in rows and columns, I can add, um, apply a pivot table to it, I can do analysis, I can, um, you could actually even just run the um, chart wizard and it would actually populate it into a chart for you very quickly because the data is already laid out in that format to be done that way. Does that kind of answer the question? Yeah, you did. Thanks a lot. Okay. Sorry about that. It's still spinning over here. Oh, there we go. Let's see if it will. Now that you said thank you, it's going to work. So, so there's what it actually looks like in here. But again, um, like I said, it's not a problem to actually just um, run a table wizard or um, on this because the data comes out actually very clean. So it's pretty easy to manipulate. But do remember what I said about knowing your units. These are in thousands. It still says that up here. You want to make sure when you label your table that it does that as well. Nora, you had a question about published contents. Was that what I was saying about the um, Statistics Canada publications? I can share Firefox again. I think I knew what you were talking about there. Thanks a lot, Katie. No problem. So uh, Statistics Canada, uh, let me see if I can, it's going to take a second, so I'm going to talk while I'm doing it. For anybody that's on the business guide slash statistics, um, the link I put in earlier, when you scroll down, the site search I used as an example was um, publications from Statistics Canada. Um, they are um, all over the site, but um, they do actually have a section of Statistics Canada publications. I find, um, uh, like I said, they're not, they're not great for searching them on mass you're more likely, I find, to run into them or be able to uncover them using that Google site search. And then if you find one, you can use that Google site search to search more within that specific publication. 
Um, but I find I don't even encounter them unless I'm using that Google site search. Um, but there is a section on the website for them. They just don't have a great landing page. Does that answer your question, Noor? Thank you. Are you showing something on your screen? Um, no, it's frozen. Oh, OK. I'm just talking. It is for anybody that has, there it goes. Um, so for anybody that has the business administration guide, um, so business administration under data and statistics, when you scroll down, you're going to see um, that site search from Statistics Canada, but it specifically mentions publications. And I think that's what Nora was asking about. Um, I find I don't even run into them unless I'm using this Google search. And then if you find one that you really like, this Insights on Canadian Society, we had a professor ask about it specifically. She wanted to search inside of it. She wanted her students to search inside of it. So they were able to use this publication number here, put it in the site search, and actually search within that for retirement information that this, the professor was looking for. But I find they're, they're even hard to find without doing a Google site search. So I think that's about all for me if there's no other questions. But if you do come across anything, uh, you want to download your data, um, you want help working with Statistics Canada, please feel free um, to email me or drop in the library. We have a number of our librarians, not just myself, that are uh, quite comfortable using Statistics Canada. Um, as much as anyone can be, it can be quite tricky. Um, uh, it's not just you. They don't have a fantastic website. Um, and so often, two heads are better than one. So please feel free to come back in the library if you have any questions. Great. And I'll just add a word about the learning passports. Uh, you can come to the library desk if you're on campus. You will be given a survey to fill out. And we'll be checking your names against the, the list of participants in Blackboard Collaborate. So if you've been like more than one person watching at the screen, please add your name in the uh, text box now so that we know that you attended the session. And also, if you're a distance student, um, please contact me or Katie. I'll just uh, put my uh, information into the text box now. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, we'll email you the survey so that you can fill it out. You return the survey to us along with your learning passport sheet. And then we can print, stamp, and scan it back to you. But thanks so much for coming out tonight. Yes, you can um, get it. This is the deadlines on the 29th. I believe they usually have a cutoff time sometime in there. So make sure you know when the deadline is. And we're happy to sign it before the deadline. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for coming, everybody. Thanks, Katie. You're the best. Yes, she is. <laughs> you as well, eh? Yeah, I'll, I'll share the best with Denise, maybe. <laughs>